Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new. As you saw from the title and the thumbnail, we got a Trailmaster Mid XRX and today I'm going to be giving you a review of it and show you a couple modifications that I made for the kids. Let's get into it. Here it is. It wasn't like this when I got it. I opted for the unassembled version. You can get it assembled, but I wanted to be able to put everything together myself and figure out where everything's supposed to go before something tore up and I had to figure it out like that. So I got everything assembled. One thing I want to mention, if you do go that route and probably even if you get it assembled, all these fasteners will come loose. Every single one of them will come loose, even on the fenders. So I would advise you put blue Loctite on everything that you assemble. And even the things that you don't assemble, take them off and put some blue Loctite because it'll hold everything together better. And you don't really have to worry about things coming apart. Things come pre-assembled, such as like the motor to the frame, you know, the little guards, the shock bolts, uh, the steering components, all that was pre-assembled. But honestly, go back and check because there were a couple of bolts on the motor mounts that were loose. These were loose. These have cotter pins in them. You just pop them out, tighten it. I mean, you don't want to get it like ridiculously tight, but you want to get it tight enough to where there's no wiggle room like that. So what I'm getting at is check over everything. Even the lights came pre-assembled. They were also loose as well. One of the horns were loose. Just check everything. Even the electrical. <laughs> I know I keep saying even then, even then, but some of the electrical was loose as well. Um, you know, it's just basic metric wrenches and screwdrivers and things like that. So check over everything is what I'm trying to get across to you. Check the cable tensions as well. Uh, when we first got this, when we hit the go pedal, it wasn't going as fast as it should be. And it was because that cable right there had a lot of play in it. Just as well, it didn't want to go into neutral very good because the cables that control forward and reverse were loose. And you pretty much just go back here. I can show you really quick. The um, the throttle cable's connected to that. I'm not sure how well you can see it. It'd be easier if I took the air box off. This is, this is the air box. But it's literally under there. You loosen a Phillips head screw, pull the tension out of it with pliers, uh, like needle nose, and then tighten it back down, and that's good. And this is a shifter adjustment. You just adjust the play out of it. You can also loosen, that's a 10, mill 10 millimeter bolt. You can just, this thing has like little cogs in it. You can literally just pull it out and turn it. In my case, I had to take the, take the, uh, add tension to it because it was loose. And it, when you put it in neutral, it didn't engage into neutral. It was still in one of the gears. I can't remember if it was forward or reverse, but got it adjusted, working perfect now. Thing to look out for is your adjustments. This adjusts your wheels out and in. When we first got it, I was driving it and I was trying to go straight but the steering wheel was turned something like that. And I was like, I have OCD, so I wanted that to be perfectly straight when I'm going straight, as most people would probably want on something like this. So you literally can just loosen these nuts right here, and you can adjust this. Um, if you're not sure how to do alignment and all that, there's videos online about it. You literally just need a tape measure. You can also just eyeball it because obviously from the factory, this wasn't that great and it was working okay. So you can probably eyeball it, but Again, I have OCD, so everything is pre-measured perfectly and straight, true. Um, it does steer a lot tighter when you adjust that, make it right, and it rides a lot better as well. Another important thing to check when you first get something like this is the engine oil and the gear oil. The engine oil was already filled, but I don't know if it was the correct weight. I don't know if it was the a good quality, so I just dumped that out and put something that I knew was a good quality. And what I did, as far as like breaking it in, I just changed it every two to three hours because these engines have a lot of metal shavings and everything in the oil the first few hours. So, you know, these things don't have filters. You ride it, change it after two or three hours, do that a couple times until the oil starts looking clean. And then you can go to the regular like 10 hour interval. Now, on the gearbox, you cannot see this. I've tried to get it in camera a couple, a couple times, but I can't. Yeah, you can see it actually, there you go. So it says 250 milliliters on the gearbox, right? This thing, I think 250 milliliters comes up to like 8.45 ounces or something. I, same case as the engine, I drained the gearbox oil out and there was like two to three ounces in it. That's nowhere near 8.45, so that's definitely something you want to check. It doesn't have a dipstick. You literally just drain the stuff out, but I would recommend just draining that out and putting a good fluid in that you know it's a high quality and it's the correct amount because low oil in a gearbox causes heat, causes extra wear on the gears inside. Not a good idea. It's cheaper to change the oil than the gearbox, you know, the actual gearbox. So 
do that and do the same kind of thing. It had metal shavings and everything from just the wear of new parts breaking in and all. A couple times, change it, then after that you should be good. On to the modifications. This is not really a modification, but it's sort of an upgrade. The fuel filter right there, see it, the white thing? Um, I use the name brand fuel filter. I have Kohler engines on my mowers and everything, and I had a couple of fuel filters sitting around. I know Kohler makes quality fuel filters. Briggs & Stratton makes good quality. Kawasaki, Onan, whatever. Get a good quality fuel filter because the thing that came on this literally has some kind of mesh that had holes in it like that big. And all that's good for is like getting big particles, like leaf particles or something. It's not really going to trap if you got sand in it or gravel or dust. You know, you drop these things on gravel, it makes a lot of dust. So get a good quality fuel filter that's going to keep the carburetor clean. It's going to keep it running better for longer. So you don't have to disassemble the carburetor and clean it and all that junk. Uh, that's just a upgrade that I recommend doing that'll be very worth it in the long run. Since we're talking about maintenance, let me show you how I'm able to keep up with the maintenance. See the hour meter right there? This thing has a little bit more than 12 and a half. Maybe like, maybe it has 16 hours or something like that on it now. Because uh, when we got it, the kids drove it for a long time, you know, and I had ordered that, but it came in a couple days late because it got lost in the mail or something. Anyways, get an hour meter because it helps you keep up with maintenance on these things. And you'll know when you need to change it because changing oil on these engines like this, any kind of unfiltered engine is very important because like I said, they get a bunch of trash floating around in there. There's nothing filtering it out and it's just running through your engine. Change it every 10 hours, drain it fill it back up you're good same with the gear oil and all that type of stuff and the valve clearances and your spark plugs and your air filter i do have to blow this air filter out about every five hours or it kind of kind of loses power a little bit it starts kind of idling funny yeah i just take the air filter off and blow it out but get an hour meter definitely worth it everything that i talk about today will be linked in the description so you can just click it and see what it is or see you know get one similar to it or whatever but hour meter is awesome. I put one of these on everything. You'd be surprised how much you use something and not even realize it. It rained for literally two minutes just now and flooded everything out. It was pouring down rain. And it sounds like it's about to rain again. We got a lot of crazy weather going on right now. But anyways, the next thing I added was a radio. Kids like to blast music. I like to blast music. It just makes it more fun to drive and you can drive it for longer periods. And the kids like to pretend it's a real car and I don't know, radio is pretty cool to have on something like this. So what I did was added that. It's for motorcycles. It's uh, vibration proof, waterproof, has AM, FM, Bluetooth, micro SD card slot, USB, so you can charge your phone with it. Um, I have it set up to where it only comes on when you turn the key on, it'll get power. Maybe you'll see it flashing. Can you see the uh, 12 clock flashing right there? I set it up like that because I was reading the reviews. People were complaining about it draining the battery. So I just have it set up to when you cut it off, there's no power going to it. So it can't drain the battery. Um, it's pretty loud. And it's, like I said, it's made for motorcycles. So it's pretty loud. It does, the sound does kind of die out or it did when you're going full speed just because the engine was so loud. And it brings me to the next modification I made. Before I move on to the next modification, I almost forgot since we were talking about the radio. See that little black bag right there? I have it zip tied just to the frame so it can't move around or whatever. And it is the perfect size to hold your phone or an MP3 player or anything like that. I got that because I was afraid one of the kids were going to have their phone in their pocket or their iPods or whatever music device. And it would fall out and they would drive over in this gravel. And that would be a very bad day because those things are not cheap. So I put that little bag there and it works out just fine. The, uh, your phone or whatever you put in there hangs just perfectly in place. So it's not like bouncing around or none of that. And it protects the phone and they don't have to worry about dropping it. Worked out perfect. It's pouring down rain again. So I slid this thing inside and blew it off. But remember how I was talking about with the radio, if you were going full speed, the engine was just really loud and it was kind of difficult to hear the music. What I did was add a longer pipe to the already existing muffler and I'll explain how I did that. The uh, the muffler has a mesh on it. Most of these mufflers have like little mesh on them. You can just knock that stuff out with some needle nose pliers. This is a three quarter inch NPT barb fitting. And that hole is about the perfect size for three quarter inch NPT. I do have a tap and I did tap the hole, but you can, this metal is softer than this fitting metal is. So you can actually thread it 
without the need for a tap. And you just have to be very careful and gentle with it. What I did, that's a three quarter MPT bar fitting. And this is three eighths black iron pipe. So what I did was I cut the barb off to the point where this three eighths pipe fit in there just perfect to where I could just tap it on with a hammer, not beat it on, tap it on with a hammer so it hold in place. And I just welded it in place. Um, so I did that, and if you don't know how, I don't have a pipe bender, but if you can look up how to bend pipe without a bender, you literally just fill this pipe up with sand. You know, you want to pack the sand in there really good, and then you can bend it with pliers or a vise or whatever you've got to bend things with. You can even put it in between something, like put it in between, not on the go-kart, obviously, because you don't want to bend this up, but you can put it in between something and get your bends like that. Um, so I just did this, and wow, I can't believe how much quieter this made it. I knew adding a longer pipe would make it quieter, but it's actually so quiet, you can barely hear the exhaust anymore. All you hear is like the valve ticking and the mechanicals of the engine running. Um, and down here, I used this, these parts right here actually came off of the pallet that the go-kart was shipped on. And uh, the nuts even came off of the pallet. This right here is a piece of all threads. So all I used out of my stuff was the all thread. Everything else came off the pallet. I did have to get the pipe. I did have to get the, uh, Three, uh, the uh, three quarter inch NPT barb fitting, but I'll, I'll show you how quiet this thing is in a minute. It didn't rob any power. It actually feels like it has more low end torque now. And before, when you were driving full speed and then let off the gas, you'd hear like a little bit of backfire. This pipe completely did away with the backfire sound, like the popping of the exhaust completely did away with that. It's non existent anymore. So, adding this pipe added more low end torque and it also did away with the crackling. And I'm sure the neighbors are a lot happier with it now, too, because it's so quiet. Before I move on to the next thing, I want to show you this thing is on there. I mean, you can see I'm rolling the entire go-kart by the muffler. It is not flexing or moving or none of that type of stuff. It's a very solid connection, and you don't have to worry about it breaking off unless you actually plow it into something, which uh, you're probably going to bend the frame up and everything else if you do that anyway. So let's move on to the next modification. The last modification that I made is this really bright light right here. It's pretty cool because it's kind of hidden. You can't really see it unless you're looking for it, you know? Um, the lights that came on this thing are pretty bright. They're not near as bright as that thing is. Uh, the kids will ride at night sometimes, or they, especially in the winter times, what I'm thinking about when it starts getting dark at like 5.30 or 6, they can still, you know, once they get out of school, they can still come home and ride if they want to. I, this is the light switch, as you can see, None of the lights came on. I also had this wired up to the key switch so that it doesn't, you know, drain the battery as well. You can see these lights, they're pretty bright at night. They're a lot brighter than this, but you can see the difference here. That thing literally turns the night into daylight, maybe 25 feet out, maybe 20, 30 feet wide. It makes everything, you know, where you can see it and it's a lot safer to ride at night than those are. I have those aimed, you know, somewhere right in here, maybe like six feet out. I have both of those centered. And then this is kind of like a floodlight, so it floods the entire area in front of you. It's really cool and it works out great, especially for driving at night. Let me turn this thing off. I don't want to drain the battery. What I did, I just have literally a piece of tubing. I just had this sitting around my shop and I ran the wire in this tubing, this plastic tube. I ran it up to here and I actually tucked it in, tucked the wire into this uh, canopy that came with the go-kart and I just used butt splices. It's normally better to solder, but you know, butt splices are fine in this case. And again, I used, you see the little clamp that I used there? That came on the pallet. So you need to save parts off the pallet if you can, because you can always use them for something. These uh, clamps came off the pallet and you can see I literally just bolted it on and this thing, I'm moving the entire go-kart. The thing ain't moving. So you just have to be careful. As an adult getting into the passenger side, you will bump your head on that if you don't pay attention to it. It makes driving at night a lot better. We've only had one issue with the go-kart. It wasn't a big issue, but it was an issue. Uh, it was with this gearbox would leak oil if you drove it for over 30, you know, for around 30 to 40 minutes and above. I guess the oil would get hot and you know, when it gets hotter, I guess it gets thinner. Um, but it was leaking out of this. I'm not sure if you can see where my fingers, you see that black seal, the O-ring? I actually added that. Okay, first, 
I, I noticed the leak. I called the company we bought it from, and they said, well, it's still under warranty. They said, we'll ship you a new gearbox, and you just ship the one back, you know, that's bad or whatever. So I did that. Put the new gearbox on. It was doing the same stuff. So, and, and they said from the factory that it was missing a seal or O-ring, whatever. Long story short, this one was doing the same thing as the new one, and I'm not sure if this is a common problem or not, but all I did was literally get an O-ring. This thing, the shaft has play. I'm not going to pull on it or whatever because it doesn't have the play anymore, but that O-ring right there, it takes up the play in the shaft, and it also seals the leak because that's where it was leaking out. It uh, it literally moved around an eighth of an inch. You could pull it in and out, and uh, there's a snap ring. So what I did was take this bolt, loosened it, slid this off, and then you can get to the snap ring. You pull the snap ring off, you pull the shaft forward as far as you can, slide the O-ring over it, put the snap ring back on, and the snap ring kind of holds it in place. Then you just reassemble this, and that completely fixes it. I'm not sure why they're not doing that from the factory, but... That is an issue, and if you don't stay on top of it, you're gonna leak your oil out, you're probably gonna fry your gearbox. So it's a minor issue, but if not fixed, it can turn into a major issue, and that gearbox is like 180 bucks. It's a lot of money for something like this, especially, you know, I imagine it wouldn't last too long if you didn't fix that. So it's just something to look out for. I'll show you how quiet this pipe made it. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to tell, you know, because of the camera, you're not here in person. But I can guarantee it does make it a lot quieter, especially if you live in a neighborhood where people might get frustrated with loud sounds or you have a radio you want to hear. It does make it a lot quieter. So choke it because it's cold. I haven't cranked it up in a couple of days. Unchug it. I'm not sure if you can tell, but all you can hear is the mechanicals of the engine. Like I said, I don't know how much that's going to show you in this video, you know, because you're not person listening to it. But all you could hear when I was revving it up was the clutch engage in there or like the clutch spinning for the uh, CVT. You can hardly hear the exhaust anymore. That little bit of pipe really makes a huge improvement. And like I said, it also makes it have a lot more, not a lot more, but it also makes it have a little bit more low end torque. I'm going to answer a question that I have that it was very difficult for me to find the answer to is... Can I, as an adult, ride in this with my kids? And the answer is yes, if you're not over six feet tall. Um, I am 5'10", I weigh 200 pounds, and I can fit in there. I'm about the maximum size that I would want to fit. If I got was any taller or any bigger, I don't know how comfortable it would be. But the passenger seat, you have plenty of room. You can see, I mean, your feet go all the way to there. You see the gas pedals are a little bit closer than that bar right there. So as a passenger, you have a lot of room. Uh, well, I mean, not a lot of room, but you got, it's comfortable. I'll say that. Now, the driver's seat, it's adjustable. The passenger seat is not adjustable. I was under the impression, impression that the uh, passenger seat was adjustable, but it's not. Um, which, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I guess you would want as much room as you could have as a passenger. But the driver's seat is adjustable. Right now, it's all the way back. Um, and it's comfortable for me too. Like I said, for my height and weight, that's about the maximum that I would want, you know, to feel comfortable riding in. If you're probably over six feet tall, I don't even know if you're going to be able to fit in this thing. Um, I mean, you, you probably could, but you're going to be squeezing your knees out because my knees go out a little bit. I'll get in in a, in a minute just to show you so you have sort of an idea of what you're working with here. But, uh, and another question I had was with this thing, with the seat slid all the way forward, well, my little girl have enough room or you know where her little feet touch the pedals and my little girl i have a seven year old and a 12 year old the 12 year old obviously this is the perfect size for her but the seven year old she's a little bit shorter i, I don't know her exact height i think i think she's 36 inches tall i want to say she's three feet tall she's not if she's not she's real close to that her feet fit perfect i mean you gotta you gotta max out this seat belt is as far as it will go, but her feet will touch the gas pedal and the brakes. So anything less than three feet tall, I wouldn't, I'd wait till my kid got a little bit older, but 
for her size. Luckily, this thing's perfect. For me, I can ride it. My wife can ride in it with me. My wife's like, I think she's 5'8". She weighs about 110 pounds. She fits in it with me just perfect. So the answer is yes. If you're that height and weight, you can ride in it. If you're over six feet tall, I wouldn't bother. If your kid's under three feet tall, I wouldn't bother. They have a mini version. They have It's called like a mini XRX. This is the mid XRX. And then they have a larger version, but it's for adults. So this is perfect if you have kids and you want to ride too. This is me in the passenger seat. Yeah, I got plenty of room. I usually ride kind of like this with my knee up. You can kind of grab onto that or also kind of, you can put your arm around here and it makes it a little bit more comfortable, but this is me in the passenger seat. It's actually pretty comfortable. You know, you can sit normal if you'd like. You don't have to, you don't have to hold your arms up. I just do that because when kids are driving full speed, it's kind of scary if you're not holding on to something. Driver's seat, obviously. You can see my knees kind of bent. This is what I was saying. If you're over six feet tall, you might be kind of crammed in here. Um, like I said, for my height, this is about the maximum I'd want to go. But you still can hit the brakes and the gas. And like I said, I normally drive, you know, when I'm running the kid around. I usually uh, just have my knee kind of out like this. And where the kids are smaller or my wife's sitting here, they're smaller than I am. So obviously, you got enough room for them. You probably couldn't fit two of me in this thing too comfortable. But me and a smaller person, it fits just fine. I can reach the pedals just fine. You know, I'm hitting the brake and the gas right there. You got the little shifter. You do kind of have to bend around to get to the shifter, as you can see. But uh, like I said, I just couldn't. I looked online, and I couldn't find good information on the size for an adult. I looked a lot, and I was getting heights, but I didn't even. I, didn't, I never saw anybody sitting in it. That, you know, you get, you get what I'm saying. If you're looking at this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So hopefully this helps you out with that. All right, guys, as always, I hope you got something from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and I will get back with you normally within a couple of days. Um, and if I have anything else to add, I might make another video, like as far as like long-term durability, or if I have any issues with it, if anything comes up that I think you need to know. I think I covered most of what I wanted to get across to you guys in this video. But like I said, I might make one in the future. If you have questions or anything like that, just let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. And before I go, the reason I didn't ride this thing around is because it keeps storming and our driveway is washed out and there's water and mud everywhere. And I don't want to get this thing too filthy and then have to wash it off just for a video. So I <laughs> hope you guys understand. Take care.